Good evening, everybody. This is a response video to a sort of a tag video from Zom Gets Chris, also known as Christina Rad. This is a questionnaire provided by the Jesuit School of Theology in Santa Clara, part of the UC Berkeley system. This is a questionnaire for people identified as atheists. Now, I have said before that atheism isn't exactly the best definition that I can use for my uh, theological leanings, but I have used the term in an act of solidarity for people that actually are uh, atheists. I uh, have come across the term agnostic, sort of meaning that one has to define words like God or religion or spirituality or theology in order to effectively answer the question. I have used the term that I am an epistemological agnostic cosmic pantheist. In other words, saying that if there is some sort of god that's out there, then this god would have to be in charge of the whole entire cosmos, instead of just our one little world. And that's sort of the answer that most religions give us, is that god is sort of this local entity in charge of us. A solipsism, as, as Christopher Hitchens would call it. And I just don't find that to be an accurate assessment of our entire cosmos. But I use the term atheism for most people, because that's a term that most people would tend to understand. Background questions. Were you raised atheist, or did you have a religious upbringing of some sort? And that's sort of the first problem that I have with this questionnaire is sort of this uh, either-or thing that's written from a religious perspective to try to understand uh, self-identified atheists. And it doesn't really work. Uh, my mother was, or well, is, rather devoutly religious. And my stepfather, who raised me, well, wasn't, wasn't very religious until later on in his life. Now, my mother made sure that we all went to church roughly every Sunday. My stepfather sort of came along for the ride, but didn't really believe it until uh, a little bit later on in his life. So I can say that I had a religious upbringing. I eventually, of course, became uh, legitimately religious myself. I uh, was a Baptist for a large point in my life when I joined the military. I started joining... Uh, uh, Pentecostal-style churches. Eventually, I used the term uh, uh, non-denominational to describe my religious stance. Uh, and it culminated when I was in the Navy, uh, when I took the collateral duty, as is known as a religious lay leader. Uh, essentially, I was in charge of the spiritual needs of other members of my ship crew when there wasn't an embarked chaplain on board. And since we were a fairly small ship, TAS, uh, for missions that kept us isolated from the rest of the battle group, mostly, well, there wasn't a chaplain on board, so it did become my responsibility to provide those services for the rest of the crew. If raised religious, question two says, when and why did you become an atheist? Was this transition from religion, like for you, for your family, etc.? Was it a quick transition or a slow one? Was it easy for you or difficult? Well, you might say that my religious life began to decline in the last couple of years of my military life when I began to examine what I believed and what I experienced in the world around me. And as I said before, the claims that religion made didn't really stack up with well, scientific evidence. And I had to come to terms with that. I still considered myself rather religious and definitely uh, spiritual, but those doubts started creeping in. And it wasn't until after I started college, and it really wasn't even college, it was when I started viewing YouTube videos of some people uh, on YouTube, a uh, guy named Non Stamp Collector, uh, Prophet DH, uh, Aaron Raw, uh, people on the Thinking Atheists and the Atheist Experience, that sort of caused me to ultimately challenged the things that I believed when they presented their case, and it was questions that I had uh, about the Bible, uh, about religion in general, that I didn't really have an answer for, and just sort of forced me to really consider the things that I believed, or uh, such a case maybe didn't believe anymore. Uh, was it quick transition or slow one? Well, definitely it was a slow transition. 
uh, when I became a, a Christian, it was basically fairly quick. You know, well, do you believe or do you not believe? Well, yes, I believe in Jesus, therefore I'm a Christian. Transitioning from, well, bear in mind, I was a Christian for 20 some odd years. You, you don't change your mind about those things fairly easily. So it was a slow transition, very, very long thought out uh, thought processes. Was it easy for you or difficult? Well, that is a relatively subjective question. It was very, very difficult and time consuming. But as far as making the ultimate decision that, well, no, I did not believe the same things I believed anymore. No, I didn't no longer believe that Jesus Christ was the Son of God because I no longer believed in the biblical concept of God. Well, that was easy for me. It was an academic decision for me at that point. And I say it was easy compared to other people because I'm a well, single college student and a fairly professional individual. My life, my family, friends didn't really depend on my holding on to religious concepts that I no longer believed. And that's different from some other people that do have, say, you know, jobs within the church, maybe they're a minister. Well, I no longer had that life anymore. I was already separated from organized religion when I ultimately came to the conclusion that I no longer believed. So at that point, it was easy and easier for me than it is for some other people. Now, the next section is thinking about atheism. Do you identify yourself as an atheist? Well, yes, I've covered that. I call myself an atheist, even though the term isn't exactly accurate. I do use the term atheist, and I, I apply that label to myself. And if people have further questions, I'll explain to them exactly what it is that I believe or do not believe. If so, what does being an atheist mean to you? Well, it means for me, as I said, it isn't exactly an accurate term. It means to me that I do not believe in the God that you are purporting. I do not believe that you have presented your case and your evidence for the existence of your God. Therefore, I do not believe. How does it feel to be an atheist? Optimistic, pessimistic, hopeful, cynical, happy, sad, connected to, isolated from other people, etc.? Uh, for me, being an atheist is nothing but pure academics. I, well, I am an educator, I think, academically. I do not believe in XYZ religious propositions. Therefore, I consider myself an atheist. This is nothing that I feel anything about. But going back to the previous question, it took a long time for me to get to that, that uh, position... So I have to think back a little bit to when all this was going on, that I was scared back when I still believed in hell and when I still believed in God, the con God concept in general. It becomes a question of frightening, am I making the right decision, am I thinking this thing thoroughly through, what sort of things do I believe or, or not believe? Am I going to be tortured and tormented in hell for all of eternity? And these are the sort of things that I had to work out in my life and in my method of thinking to get to that point. So back when I was still going through these things, yeah, I was frightened, I was scared, I was a little bit uh, pessimistic. But I... 43 Alley is another YouTuber who came up with the concept that he had to hold to the truth, no matter where the truth led him. Christopher Hitchens also had a statement to that effect. And, and to me, that was also the case for me. I had to find out what the truth was as I understood it, even if that meant I abandoned those things that I've known for most of my life. So now that I'm past that big hurdle, as it is, uh, religiously, religiously speaking, that I no longer really feel anything about being an atheist. It's just that I don't believe the same things that other people believe. Question two. 
Why do you think that most people in the United States believe in God, practice some form of religion, and do not identify themselves as atheists? I think it's because most people in the United States legitimately do believe in some con concept or another. It may be because it's traditional, it may be a family thing, um, but for most people, they do genuinely believe it. And for other people, they genuinely do not believe it. it it's not something that really needs to be analyzed part of who they are. It's an important part of their lives. And do not identify themselves as atheists? Well, for most people, it's because they are not atheists. Why should they call themselves something that they are not? Like when I became an atheist, I realized I no longer believed that Jesus Christ was the Son of God because I no longer believed in the Judeo-Christian concept of God. Why should I continue calling myself a Christian if I wasn't one? And it's the same concept. Uh, there's some people, some self-proclaimed atheists that, that want to you know, pull everybody that is non-religious into the umbrella of atheism, agnosticism, agnosticism, or just plain somebody who is non-religious. Well, well, those aren't atheists. Why should they call themselves atheists? Question three. Do most people who know you, friends, family, co-workers, etc., know that you're an atheist? Why or why not? Some of them do. Some of them don't. I've had conversations to this effect with uh, a number of people, and some do not. It really depends on what the situation is. I understand that I base my life for the longest part of my life on being a Christian. That was my identity. The odd part is, now that I'm non-religious, it is not a part of my identity. It is something interesting about me. I don't believe the same thing that XYZ people believe. But back when I was Christian, I could say that I don't believe certain things that Jewish people believe, that I don't believe certain things that Muslim people believed, or that Hindus or Buddhist people believed. And right now it's a, the, the same concept. I do not believe same, certain things that Christians believe. And so unless it actually something that comes up as a relevant part of the conversation that we're having, why talk about it? And friends and family members and co-workers and such that do know that I'm an atheist, it's something that they respect about. You know, okay, I don't believe the same thing that they believe. Well, there's more important things to do, like, let's get to work. Gonna hang out with my family, let's hang out with the family for the sake of being with my family. If we're gonna engage in some religious or philosophical conversation, which sometimes we do, and that's something that can be brought up. My mother knows that I no longer believe. I think my boss knows that I'm an atheist. Uh, certain professors at the university and certainly a number of the students know that I'm an atheist. If it's not something that's really, really relevant or important, then they don't really know. Are most of your friends atheists? Why are not? Why not? Well, most of my friends are fairly devout Christians, as most of my family members are. I'm in the middle of the Bible Belt. Most people believe in God. Either some denomination of Christians, or there are certain of my friends and fellow students who are other religions other than Christianity. I've known a few Buddhists, some Muslims, some Jews, and that's okay. I'm not really sure. I apologize if you hear some background noise. I, there are people that are walking behind me. It's not a question of why or why not my friends are atheists. They believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. They are a Christian. Why or why not is not really a relevant question. Uh, they're not atheists because they believe in God. And I don't see why there should be a concern about that. Have you ever been treated differently by people because you're an atheist? If so, please describe this in detail. Well, let me explain. I don't really get any different treatment from people for several reasons. First, 
that I'm a military veteran, and I live in a community that greatly appreciates military service. I walk around with that hat that says Operation Iraqi Freedom Veteran that automatically gives people respect. And now, if they also know that I'm religious, well, they go back to the fact that I served in the military. The uh, second reason is the fact that I tend to be fairly respectful with other people, even people of other religions, of other beliefs, cultures, and worldviews, and then I'm generally interested in what they have to say, why they believe the things that they believe. I can walk into a mosque and, and not feel uncomfortable with it. I'll take my shoes off and walk into the prayer mat with them. I'm not going to pray with them, I'll observe with them, and I'll ask the imam some questions later. I can do this because, frankly, I've already done that. And I did that back when I was still a Christian. Likewise, when I visited uh, the local Baha'i community's 19-day feast, it's the same principle. I'm not going to believe the same things that they believe. I'm not going to even understand everything about their religion. But I'm interestedly interested to know what their religious beliefs are. And again, it comes back to being an educator. I am a history teacher, history slash social studies. This, these are things that I need to know about other people's beliefs, because either I need to teach this topic in the classroom, or I'll have students within the classroom that believe these different religious beliefs, and I need to know what their beliefs are, in case I need to accommodate something about their religious beliefs. Um, Ramadan, for example, or some other feast day, or some other uh, prayer event that I need to know about, because I'll need to accommodate it within a classroom. So the more that I know about their beliefs, the better that I will be able to effectively teach them. The next section is thinking about religion. Overall, would you say that other people's belief in God is a good thing, a bad thing, or something you are indifferent about? And why? Uh, again, it's a badly worded question. You want me to place people in one group or another, religious or not religious, and that's not the way that it works. I don't evaluate people based upon what they believe or what they do not believe. I've, I, I go by what Martin Luther King Jr. said. You don't judge people by the color of their skin, or in this case, the God that they haven't believed in. You judge them by the content of their character. There are people who are fairly devoutly religious that make a concerted effort to make a positive difference in the world around them, and that's what I look for. I observed in the classroom a few semesters ago, the principal of the school was also the pastor of the local church. This is somebody who used his religious beliefs to make a positive difference. Uh, my mentor teacher, I can't go into any details about who he is or what school I'm at, because, well, apparently that's illegal. But I can tell you that he's active in his church, active in his youth group, and this has a very positive impact upon his work in the classroom and upon his students. But for some other people, want to cram their religious beliefs down people's throats, want to take away the rights of other people based upon what they believe or do not believe. And that is a very, very bad thing. So it does not matter to me what they believe or do not believe. It matters to me how those beliefs affect their lives and affect how they treat other people. Overall, would you say that organized religion is a good thing, a bad thing, or something you're indifferent about? See previous question. It's the exact same question if I'm talking to an individual or if I'm talking to the overall group. It depends on what their activities are, not what their beliefs are. How do they treat other people? What ministries do they have? How are they making an impact on society around them? If not a religious person, would you consider yourself to be a spiritual person? Why or why not? Agnosticism. You have to define the word. Define the word spiritual. Define the word God. Define the word religion. Define the word scripture. Define the word holy. Define the word spiritual. If you don't have an adequate definition for that word, how can I answer this question? I can only assume that you're talking about some new witch thing. 
I have to go by what Carl Sagan said. He talked about numinous experience, these overall overwhelming experiences that we don't have the adequate words to be able to describe. A sunset, a rainbow, a little puppy dog, a newborn baby child, or the example that I'd like to use from my, my biology lab course, a little flatworm on a slide underneath the microscope. Believe it or not, that was a very profound experience for me. And seeing that little guy move, tried to keep away from the light and the little of the microscope, tried to keep himself within the few droplets of water on the microscope, and showing to me just how pervasive life is and how this guy really wanted to survive, even though I was harassing him underneath this microscope. That, for me, is also spiritual. It, that may not be a spiritual experience for some other people. So until you can find exactly what it is that you're talking about, I cannot give you an adequate answer. The next session, Living as an Atheist. Many people say that belief in God provides a foundation for their morality. As an atheist, on what do you base your morality? How do you decide what things are good or bad, whether you're living rightly or wrongly, etc.? That is not an easy answer, and I can spend all day trying to answer that question. All that I can say, really, is that our morality, the things that we believe are good and bad, is all based upon our own personal philosophy of life. Our philosophy of life is determined by everything. Our religious beliefs, our upbringing, our schools, our experiences with, with crime and punishment, law enforcement, all of that comes together into one package. And you can't really say, well, this is one thing that defines morality, when it all defines what our morality is. And yes, there are some things about my own personal morality that are based upon the things that I was taught, the lessons that I was taught back when I was religion, but they had to be refined uh, once I was no longer religion. They had to be refined by, my say, secular philosophy, uh, say, you know, Socrates, Plato, Aristotle, uh, that everything that I was taught had to be, be reworked within the framework of secularism. That doesn't mean that I just get rid of everything that I learned back when I was religion well, gee, I'm no longer religious, no longer applies. Well, no, it still applies. A lot of it does. A lot of people that think that they get their morality from their religion or from their God concept also get part of their morality from secularism, the things that they are taught in, in school or in, the, in their lives. So you can't really define that this is one thing. Many people consider belief in God and religious practice to be essential for raising well-rounded children with a connection to a tradition that helps them see meaning in the world. What's your opinion about this viewpoint? And it goes back to the previous uh, answer that I said. Some religious practices are good, some are bad. Uh, essential for raising well-rounded children. Uh, sometimes a belief in God does help, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it harms them. What I want to see is to give children a basis of uh, secular philosophy and morality and ethics. Uh, let them live their lives according to established moral and ethical code, regardless of their religious beliefs, so that that way if something happens in their spiritual lives, they will still have that foundation, that philosophical foundation that will guide them through the rest of their lives. For me, as a history and social studies teacher, there is also a claim from the uh, NCSS, the National Council for the Social Studies, that says that the purpose of history and social studies education is to prepare uh, students uh, for citizenship. For me, my personal educational philosophy is to prepare students to fulfill their future roles in society and make a positive difference on the world around them. And it, it all comes back to the same thing, giving them a foundation for their moral and ethical decisions. And education goes a long way to help them achieve that. So whether they are religious or non-religious, for me, they will have the same basics for uh, philosophical morality and ethics. For many people, belief in God provides an explanation of how the world came into existence and why we're here. As an atheist, do you have answers or insights pertaining to these questions, and if so, what are they? Uh, let's look at that. As a matter of fact, 
let's tie that in with the next question. For many people, belief in God provides hope or comfort with respect to suffering in the world and the inevitability of death. What religious belief provides? It's not really an answer. It's not a true answer. It is this hope based upon bugger all. It's based upon nothing. It really is. You're lying to yourselves when you think you have answers for the world. You are lying to yourself about the inevitability of death. You're lying to yourself when you say that you'll live again in heaven or other people will go to hell. You don't have any way to back this up. You don't. You think you do. And the, the fact that you believe in certain religious concepts and you'll base your lives according to those religious beliefs, well, that's fine. Believe it by faith, but admit that it is belief by faith. The reality is it is mere speculation. And it's wrong. As an atheist... My beliefs are based upon hard evidence, what can be proven and what can be disproven. Religious beliefs are not things that can be proven and in a large way are disproven because of what can we can experience, what we can prove scientifically, what we can observe about the world and the cosmos around us. The religious beliefs have been conclusively disproven. So we know we can rely on that to give us these answers. Or as, as Richard Dawkins said, the trouble with religion is it teaches people to be satisfied with their knowledge of the world around you. Now you have to always keep questioning, keep observing, keep experimenting. At no point can you say, well, no, you have all the answers. You don't. You have to keep looking. People should have respect and value for the beliefs, cultures, will views of other people around them, even though they disagree. That it's okay to disagree. There's nothing wrong with disagreeing. There's nothing wrong with having a dissenting opinion. What, what is not okay, what is never okay, in any context, is to use one's religious beliefs to cause harm to other people around you. We need to use our education, all the tools at our disposal to come to some understanding of the world around us. Instead of just thinking that we have all the answers. We don't. That's probably not how you want me to answer this questionnaire. It's definitely a little bit longer than I hoped this video would be, but I can't really help that. Thank you for watching.